In this episode, we're going to talk about how to upgrade the existing speakers in your motorcycle helmet intercom unit. What's up, guys? This is DDS, Dre Does Stuff. I'm your host, Dre, and on this channel, I learn things, I do things, I figure out how to do things, and I figure out how to fix them, mostly motorcycle-related. Um, today, we're going to be taking a look at this helmet here. This is my Shoei RF1200. It's the first helmet I bought, and I got to say, it is a damn nice helmet. Next, you can't upgrade your headset without having one to begin with, so here is my already installed Cena 20S Evo. Now, the Cena 20S Evo is a great intercom unit. It comes with just about everything you'll need and a variety of microphones, but only one set of speakers. And uh, from the amount of writing I've been doing recently, I found that they're just not that great. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to upgrade them some of the reasons why you might want to do this. Maybe you tore the cable in your inside of your existing intercom unit. Maybe you just want some better sound. Uh, maybe you're having trouble hearing things and, you know, uh, whatever reason you really might be doing this. Um, I know that JBL and Cardo, Torque X, I believe, they all sell products that are already wired to the 3.5 millimeter jack you can plug directly into your intercom unit. But those are between 60 to $80, and honestly, this is such a quick and easy thing to do. I figured uh, even someone like myself could do it. So we're gonna try to do this ourselves for about $20, $25, and mostly just things you have lying around the house. Right now, I'm just working on my living room table. I've got a little wooden cutting board here. It's non-conductive. I'm not gonna scratch the table up. A little magnetic parts tray just in case I have to put any metal parts I don't want to lose in. I don't think I'm going to need that, but it's good to have just in case. Next we have some rubbing alcohol and Q-tips. I'm going to use this to keep the contacts on everything that we're soldering today clean. Here I've got this cheap screwdriver bit set uh, that I purchased at Micro Center for about $5. It's got some crappy screwdrivers and a whole bunch of bits, and it should have everything we need to get the job done. My hands are very shaky, so I got a little bit of tape here just in case I want to tape a few things in place while I'm soldering and make it a little bit easier on myself. You're obviously going to need a soldering iron. Now, this isn't the easiest thing to use. I'll be the first to tell you that, or maybe I just never learned the right way. But it's cheap and it doesn't hurt to learn. So I picked this up for about five bucks at my local 99 cent store. Um, look around, you can find this stuff in pharmacies, hardware stores. Uh, dollar stores really anywhere uh, and here I've got some lead free solder that I'm going to use to make the new connection I purchased these for about $20 on Amazon and these are the drivers that are meant to go into Bose Quiet Comfort headphones um, those retail for about $200 so I'm assuming these are quality drivers I'm hoping that they're quality drivers but you never know that's why we're going to test before and after and just laying around a couple of general tools vice grip scissors some toothy pliers a screwdriver with an interchangeable head. For finishing the project, I've got a couple of different things here. Now, I've got brush-on electrical tape, which is supposed to, you know, preserve the conductivity and waterproof your connections, um, but I might not use that. I might just use this Loctite clear silicone, which uh, hopefully we'll be able to coat the back of the speakers with to prevent them from getting damaged by moisture from my sweat or rain or whatever it may be. Uh, these are about $5 each on Amazon. Again, I'll post a link in the description. This stuff is also cheap. I can't stress how many applications it has if you're doing electrical work. This is just an assortment of heat shrink tubing. I got this on Amazon for like $4. There's all different sizes in here. You hold a little bit of heat up to it, even with a blow dryer. It forms a nice tight seal. I may use this, I may not. We'll find out. For stripping the wires, you may want to get yourself one of these. Now, this is a wire stripper and crimper tool. Uh, it's used for stripping and crimping. If you don't know what that is, neither do I. Um, but basically you're going to want to get those leads out of the speaker cable that's already going to the speakers inside of your inside of your helmet. Or if you don't have one of these, you could whittle it down with a, with a razor blade or knife or even scissors, honestly, um, if you grip them the right way. This just prevents any unnecessary damage. I don't want to have to extend any cables. So I know with this, I just place the wire in here and it's going to make a nice clean snip and should make easy work of getting those wires exposed. All right, to start things off, you're gonna to wanna to take apart your helmet as much as possible. You wanna get rid of the lining, whatever it is that you can take off to make the job easier for you. Everything is in the prep work, guys, regardless of what task is at hand. The more you prepare, the easier it will be. So you're gonna to wanna to take all of this stuff out. I'm gonna start by removing the chin curtain. Depending on the helmet you have, it may be harder, it may be easier. 
Assuming that you already have an intercom system installed, you probably did it once, so you should know how to get in there. In any case, you want to be careful to avoid damaging anything, but take everything out to get access to those speakers and cables. If you're unsure of how to put things back together, take pictures, record a video as you go along. It saved me more times than I can count, and it really doesn't cost you anything. It's just an extra step. You don't really need to take your visor off for this, but I'm going to do it anyway, just so I avoid damaging any parts unnecessarily. All right, right now I'm just loosening a screw on the intercom to detach the actual headphones from the rest of the unit. Before we completely take these out, I'm just going to turn on my intercom so we can get that readout of the stock speakers before we upgrade them. To test this out, I'm going to be using the same exact recorder set to the same audio sensitivity, and we're going to be using the same song by Black Label Society. That song is Parade of the Dead, and I'm going to get that reading right now. Was full volume that sounded a little bit distorted just from where I'm sitting I could tell that that sounded a little bit distorted I don't know how the microphone picked it up but it didn't sound that great to me now that we got this off let me see if I can route that through here and that's it we got our speakers our little headphones uh, detached from the rest of the intercom before anything I'm obviously gonna remove all of this padding I don't want to have anything between me and the wires that I'm trying to access so I'm taking off this Velcro, this foam lining. All right, so I've got all these little foam pieces and uh, Velcro pieces off. So now we're here up to the actual drivers. So let me see comparing these old ones side by side with these new Bose ones. All right, they're both uh, 40 millimeter diameter, so that's good, that's a good sign by the way. The number one thing you wanna look for when you're replacing the speakers on headphones or your intercom unit or whatever it may be is that the ohms, the resistance rating of that driver is matching to what your intercom or whatever sound output device is outputting. Uh, if the ohms didn't match up, if these were 16 ohm, 8 ohm, 64 ohm, you could have trouble with uh, volume, you could have your speakers blown out, um, multitude of problems, really you could drain your battery faster. Uh, so it's really best to find the same exact ohmage. Oh, would you look at that, they're magnetic, of course. When I strip these wires, I'm hoping to find something simple, like just a ground wire and whatever sends the signal. Um, but the back of these new drivers, and I don't know if you could see this here, it has all of these little solder points on it. And I don't know what that could be. I don't know if this is meant for some kind of surround sound system, but I guess we're just going to rely on good old uh, trial and error. So I'm taking a little flathead screwdriver right now, and I'm just kind of starting to work my way around this insulation so I can get a better view at where these cables go. All right, I got this little Velcro piece off and underneath it seems like the wire leads right here where we have uh, some black rubbery protecting sealant of some sort. So I'm probably gonna have to either heat that up or scrape it off. Uh, I don't know, I guess we'll find out how I'm gonna do that. Maybe I can just kind of get in there with the screwdriver and pry it off and not even have to use any other tools. That looks fairly straightforward, just as I hoped. It's two leads inside of this cable, so this should be a relatively easy job as long as I don't screw everything up. Um, I'm gonna continue to remove the housing off the other one so we can get them both done at the same time. I may repurpose these on the other headphones, so I'm gonna put these little baby thingies aside somewhere safe and clean next to my beer, word, which I definitely won't spill again. So again, we have this rubber housing here and I'm just gonna start by peeling that off from the side. And I'm putting a little bit of elbow grease into this. You know, I may damage things, but that's a risk I'm willing to take because the end goal is to upgrade. I don't wanna have this shitty audio anymore. Let's see if I can get it from the other side. Oh, tiny electronics. So I'm about to heat up my soldering iron and be very careful because it does get hot. I'm going to attempt to uh, undo those connections and hopefully attach them to the new ones. I'm going to take a bit of this trusty old Gorilla Tape and I'm put them right here and take these cables and I'm just going to tape them down. 
so I don't have to worry about things moving around so much while I'm trying to do this. Have a little bit of extra tape right there just in the case. All right, hopefully this is hot enough. Let's see what we can do. Oh yeah, that came right off. Let's see if we can. And look at that, they came right out nice and clean. So I'm gonna take the end of this uh, speaker cable, this proprietary end, and I'm gonna plug it back into the Cena 20S Evo, and I'm gonna place some music through it, and then touch this to the different contacts to see if I can figure out what's what. To think that if only I had checked, uh, the negative and positive poles of the back of these drivers are listed right in the Amazon page. And I don't mean like down in the description. I mean, there's actually like the third photo of the product says which one is positive and negative. So sometimes it pays to actually read the paperwork, guys. I'm going to give these wires a gentle tug just to see if the connection is indeed secure. Because the last thing I want to do is reassemble everything just to have one of these wires come loose. So I'm going to give a tug to this one. A tug to that one and they seem like they're on there pretty good okay so I'm gonna start rewrapping these wires I'm gonna try to shift them back into this housing and then maybe get some shrink wrap on up on there perhaps I should have done that before I soldered them on whoops now I want to move the shrink wrapping out of the way because I don't want it to shrink prematurely uh, the soldering iron gives off a lot of heat and if the shrink wrapping is a little bit too close then it may tighten up before I have it on where I want it to be Got my cables wired on securely besides these blue ones, which may be the ground, and I don't know where to put that. But before I proceed in rewrapping these wires, I'm going to plug this back into the intercom one more time just to make sure I'm getting nice and even sound from each driver. Intercom failed. Intercom failed. Sounds good to me, bruh. Now that I've got the shrink wrap tubing on, I'm going to shrink that down. You could do this with a lighter or a hair dryer, but I have a heat gun, so I'm going to use the heat gun. All right, now we got our new drivers successfully attached with the shrink wrap on them. Uh, the only thing left to do is if you can see the wires are still a little bit exposed here and I definitely don't want anything coming in contact with that. So after all, I'm gonna take this Loctite clear silicone and I'm gonna try to apply it. I've never used this before. I don't know how I'm supposed to use it. I just know the back says to let it cure for two hours. So I'm just gonna go to town on the back of this and try to cover up all of these contacts all of these cables, anything that's exposed, I don't want that to come in contact with sweat, water, other electronics, anything. So I'm just gonna go to town with this shit. Anyway, I'm gonna let this stuff dry, and as soon as that's dry, I'm gonna figure out a way to take care of the front. Whether it's just putting these pads on or something more serious, I know I definitely don't want anything to tear or puncture the front film of this driver, because if that tears, your sound goes all right, guys, as you can see, we're back here. The silicone glue on the back of these speakers has dried. It's nice and uh, rubbery. Now, what I want to do is figure out a way to cover this up, reinforce it, and uh, install it back into the helmet. I was thinking about how can I protect this when it's in the helmet, and I thought, why don't I just take the covers off the original drivers, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I have the original drivers here. Uh, this is what we just replaced. and. It took quite a bit of work, but I already got one undone. Now this is the cover right here that comes right off, and it's a dual layer. This is just a mesh screen, but underneath that you have a really sturdy and nice perforated uh, metal plate. Yeah, I see it has the plastic from the original drivers on it, and I'm probably just going to take the edge of my screwdriver and scratch that off and pull it out, because I'm not going to be needing that. I just want a way to protect these new drivers, and they have their own plastic. comes right out. Now earlier I mentioned that the original drivers are the same diameter as what we're replacing them with and that comes in handy at this particular moment because now I can take this cover and look at that it fits perfectly over the new over the new speaker. The metal cover came right in and I'm not too worried about that coming off because that's magnetic. The driver is magnetic, this is metal, that's not really coming off. You know I touch a screwdriver to it, it's all good and secure. This cover however um, it's just going to make it look a little bit prettier, really. It's not going to change the sound in any way, shape, or form, and uh, the driver's already protected. But that doesn't quite stay, so 
I'm going to take just a little bit of regular crazy glue and I'm going to line the perimeter of this. I just didn't do anything fancy. I got some glue on there and take this little cover. See if I can get it right in there. Okay, unfortunately the adhesive on the back of this is totally spent. Um, if you can see in the close up here, I'm trying to get that on there. And it fits right over this bulging part. As you can see, that doesn't appear to be holding very well. It's not an even surface. It turns out the inner diameter of this ring um, is not quite wide enough to get over this bulging part completely. So really at this point, I'm just going to do my best with the glue and try to push that down and form some type of seal. In retrospect, what I really should have done to begin with is just coated the entire outsides of the back of these with um, the clear silicone. I think that I would have been able to just pop this right on and let it dry and it would form a nice tight seal evenly across. Um, I guess I'll know for the next set of uh, motorcycle speakers. As for the way I'm putting this back together, it's definitely going to be hard to get back in there should I need to ever make any changes. But at that point, I think I'll just buy a new set of speakers. This should last me plenty long. Um, so all these fabrics, yeah, they're all just going to get glued together. I, I don't want to worry about anything coming undone. So I'm just going to seal it all up. I'm going to take some glue once more, and I'm going to coat the back of these drivers with a nice little dab. I'm going to take these two things, and I'm just going to smush them on there. Smush. Smush. Now that the headset is secured to the Cena intercom unit, all I need to do is get it on the helmet, fasten these two screws, and put all of my liners back in, and we should be good to go. I'm going to fast forward through the reassembly process because most of you already know how to do this. Alright, there we go. I didn't think we would make it, but we did. We got the headphones installed, uh, the comm unit. The only thing left to do is to test it out. I've got my phone paired with the intercom. We're about to play the same exact song with the same recorder on the same settings, and we're going to see if we can notice any kind of difference. So again, without wearing the helmet, just from out here, it still sounded a little bit distorted to me. I don't know if we have any volume gains, but I'm about to put it on my head and really find out what's going on. All right, there you have it. We got the uh, new speakers installed, and I'll tell you, um, there definitely is a big difference. There is definitely a big difference. Um, it's definitely louder inside. Um, the distortion that the recorder may have picked up is because this thing is just really, really cranking it now. Normally when I would have my phone paired to my intercom, I would be playing things at full volume. I actually had to turn it down to about halfway on the iPhone and uh, beyond that it would just start to make my ears hurt. It's really, really loud now and I feel like I might even have trouble hearing like police sirens or ambulances and stuff. As far as the sound goes, uh, it's much richer. There's definitely more mid-range, there's more bass. It's a nice, thick, full, juicy sound. It's creamy. It's, uh, it's everything I hoped it would be. And now with any speakers, there's definitely a break in period. So these have just been installed for the first time. Uh, as music continues to play through them, uh, they'll only get better. Once they're broken in, it should sound even better. And that was it. I hope you enjoyed.